Now let's look at um, something called codominance. Okay, now this is where one allele isn't necessarily dominant over another one, but they both contribute to the actual phenotype in the end. A nice example here is snapdragon flowers. Okay, you got a red and a white with uh, codominance. We show the alleles as superscript. Okay, um, uh, over the uh, we choose a different letter uh, for the characteristic. So in this case, color and then we show the variations of that in superscript uh, at the top there, as you can see. And you can see that actually when you get heterozygous individuals, they actually uh, get a bit of both of the parents uh, and they end up with pink flowers crossed between red and white. This is what we call, actually it's called, this is what's technically called incomplete dominance. It's an example of co-dominance. Okay, what about multiple alleles? So far we've looked at an example where there's only two alleles, um, you know, either yellow or green, for example, in the pea seeds. But some genes have more than two alleles, they've got more than two versions of a particular gene. The, the classic example of this is human blood groups uh, and blood typing, um, ABO blood typing as it's known. Multiple alleles, the three alleles involved here are actually IA, IB, and IO. We're showing them as superscript here because we've got three different alleles. Uh, your blood type genes actually code for the particular antigens that are present on the surface of your red blood cells. So you could have type A antigens, you could have type B antigens, or you could have both A and B antigens, or you could have none at all. So there's four different blood groups. You can be A, B, A, B, and O. Now, O uh, is actually a recessive allele, IO is actually a recessive allele, and IA and IB are co-dominant. So it's a little bit confusing, but if you look at the four blood groups here, uh, these are the genotypes that would code for them. So with blood group A, you could be IA, IA, you're homozygous dominant, you're both A's from your parents, you're gonna be A or you could have inherited IA from one of your parents and IO, remembering that uh, IO is recessive and therefore you'd still end up with your phenotype as uh, type A. Similar for type B, you could be IB, IB, or you could be IB, IO. With blood group A, uh, so with blood group AB, you're gonna inherit one of each, IA and IB, and with blood group O, you're gonna inherit IO and IO. You have to be homozygous recessive to end up with blood type Oh. Therefore, if you have heterozygous parents for type A and type B, um, then uh, actually they could give, uh, they could have offspring with any of the four blood types. This diagram shows uh, that you know both the parents are have um, IO because they're heterozygous. One has IA, one has IB, and therefore any combination is possible from parents like that. The next example we'll look at is sex linkage. Until now, we've only considered inheritance of genes on the non-sex chromosomes, which are called your autosomes. Okay, chromosomes number one to 20, pair one to pair 22. But pair number 23, your sex chromosomes, are a little bit different because they are not always homologous. You don't always have this nice matching pair of chromosomes with, with uh, genes in the same loci. Because if you are a, a boy, you've got a Y chromosome and an X chromosome. And the Y chromosome is actually much, much smaller than the X chromosome. So there is whole sections that are what we call non-homologous. Now genes that are present on the X chromosome and not on the Y are said to be X-linked. Certain X-linked genetic disorders such as red-green color blindness and hemophilia are therefore much more common in males as you need to have one recessive allele to have it expressed. Um, but a female who has two X's would need to end up with both recessive alleles to have it expressed. If they've got one normal X chromosome, it's always gonna be, um, it's gonna be dominant over the recessive condition. So we can look at the inheritance of certain genetic conditions that are sex-linked. As you can see in this diagram, a healthy father and a healthy mother, although they're a carrier, uh, have children. And because the boy only gets his X chromosome from his mother, there is a 50-50 chance he will inherit the recessive, the, the 
the damaged, as it were, uh, mutated X chromosome with the recessive allele on it. Um, none of their female offspring could ever get the disease in this case because they'll always inherit their father's normal dominant X chromosome, which will always mask it. So you end up, might end up with female carriers, but in this case, you're never going to have a female with the disease. Now, with sex linkage, you must show the sex chromosomes and then the alleles in superscript. The letter of the alphabet chosen relates to the condition. In this work example, the recessive X-linked condition is haemophilia, so we've used H. This shows that actually a man with the disease would have 100% of his offspring without the disease if he produced with, reproduced with a homozygous healthy female. The girls would be carriers and the boys would end up being normal. So here we can see that uh, because the affected male uh, passes on his uh, haemophilia X chromosome, but the healthy female is dominant, uh, has two healthy X chromosomes, then there is no chance of having any offspring with the disease.